Is the Israeli army about to collapse? Well, there is evidence that the IDF is teetering on the edge. Many soldiers and their families were recently interviewed in Israeli media and suggested that the IDF is suffering from a potentially terminal crisis. According to journalist Revetel Hovel, this may be a quiet and hushed up phenomenon. Many soldiers are refusing to continue fighting in Gaza. The war in Gaza has taken its toll. PTSD is hitting the genocidal maniacs hard. Oh, poor baby. Did innocent children damage your psyche? It's okay. Take a vacation to Amsterdam and enjoy a football. Match. It's even being reported that some soldiers are dying by s rather than return to the field. The platoons are empty, said Rona, the mother of one soldier. Anyone who isn't dead and wasn't wounded was emotionally damaged. Very few remained who came back to fight. The Israelis are burnt out. There is a constant, hidden, dropping out from fighting, said Edith, a second mother. This is not a conscientious objection, but rather dropping out due to burnout. Oh, thank God, you had me so worried for a second. I thought you were refusing to partake in genocide. But you're just burnt out, thank God. What a relief. Morale was low even before the IDF decided to try and take on Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. One soldier said, I don't know what army they're planning to go into Lebanon with, but there is no army. I am not going back to the battalion. Since the campaign in Lebanon began on October 1st, nearly 100 soldiers have been put out to pasture on the astral plane. <laughs> But it isn't just about Lebanon. The IDF has been on the edge of mutiny for the last six months as the genocide in Gaza has dragged on. The IDF simply cannot defeat Hamas. And I really can't understand why. They've been murdering thousands of innocent unarmed women and children and dropping bombs on random tents. So how haven't they been able to defeat the armed resistance group? I really don't get it. It's baffling. Many parents relate that the breakdown of the combat soldiers' morale started as early as April when the IDF got bogged down in Gaza. I call it refusal and mutiny, said Inbal, a third soldier's mother. They come back to the same buildings in Gaza they had cleansed, and they get booby-trapped again every time. They were in the Zaytun neighborhood of Gaza City three times already. They understand that it is pointless and useless. But wait, it gets so much juicier. We're like ducks in a shooting gallery. We don't know what we're doing here. It's the second and third time that we return to the same places. The hostages are not coming back. And you see that it is not ending. And along the way, soldiers are wounded and killed. A missile entered the building from another window and hit them. The whole company had to evacuate them. We were finished. We all wanted to go on home leave. And they decided to leave us in Gaza anyhow. This experience caused this soldier to refuse to return to the fighting back in July. I started crying on a lawn and said that I couldn't take it anymore. I was emotionally done. I told my commander that I couldn't take it anymore. I just want to fight babies and kill children, not men. Of course, these interviews in Israeli and Western media are supposed to make us empathize with these genocidal maniacs and feel bad for them. But they actually reveal a serious issue with the IDF. Their diaper babies are tapped out, mentally, physically, spiritually. In one article, CNN told the story of Eliran Mizrahi, an Israeli soldier who drove a military bulldozer. According to his friend, Guy Zakin, Mizrahi's co-driver, who spoke to CNN as well, he and his fellow soldiers would run over terrorists dead and alive in the hundreds. He graphically explained how everything squirts out from under the bulldozer. Mizrahi told Israeli media that he destroyed 5,000 homes with his bulldozer. <laughs> He also posted a clip on social media bragging about how he destroyed homes in Gaza. All right, gentlemen, I want you to repeat after me just how I do it. Ready? After a brief holiday, he was summoned back to serve in Gaza. But two days before he was set to return, he did us all a favor and killed himself. But Mizrahi isn't the only story. Soup 
is quickly becoming a serious issue for the IDF. According to Haaretz, Israeli soldiers have destroyed their souls. And according to CNN, thousands of soldiers are suffering from PTSD or mental illness caused by trauma during the war. It's unclear how many have taken their own lives as the Israeli military has not provided official figures. To make matters worse, Israelis are beginning to turn on their own country. Israeli intelligence agencies announced that they had broken up two alleged Iranian spy rings, one of them entirely composed of Israeli Jews. According to Yossi Melman, some Israeli Jews are now willing to work for Iran against Israel as a sign of what he described as the moral decay and disintegration of Israel's social cohesion. Police have arrested 14 Israelis on suspicion of spying for Iran. Melman explained the situation as he sees it. Many Israelis are depressed because they don't see an end to Benjamin Netanyahu's belligerent policies. The economy is deteriorating and the government doesn't offer hope to its citizens. All these are fertile ground for the cultivation of spies. So you see, when it comes to innocent women and children, the IDF are the best in the world. But when it comes to achieving actual military objectives against resistance forces in Gaza, Lebanon, Yemen, or against Iran, the IDF is powerless. The clock is ticking for Israel, its military, and its economy. They've innocent people, their reputation, and now, apparently, they're killing themselves. Still, they seem hell-bent on this path of self-destruction. So kudos to them, because their commitment is impressive. They will either succeed in destroying themselves, or they'll die trying. If you want to dive deeper on this story, take a look at this article by Asa Wistanley from Electronic Intifada, who inspired this video. The article is linked in the description. And if you liked this video, please consider becoming a subscriber on our website, where we post exclusive content like podcasts, explainers, documentaries, and short films. As you know, TikTok permanently banned us, and these platforms have shadow banned us and our reach. So we made this website to protect ourselves from censorship. If you become a paid subscriber, you would be helping us continue our activism and journalism. Till next time. Trust nothing. No lies.